Welcome everyone. Um, we have another another company to analyze for our viewers here, uh, and and this is the second uh, mining company, and uh, I've received uh, one other. So it looks like, as with the clean tech businesses, uh, we're getting a, a bit of a trend here. So with other with mining businesses. So today we're going to look at Power Metal Resources, um, and uh, this company is, um, you know, they are looking at, and if I just look at my notes here. So they are mining for metals such as cobalt, uh, copper, gold, uh, you know, lithium, uh, nickel. And they have uh, active projects, as you can see on the screen now, on uh, countries like Australia, Botswana, Canada, the Dominican Republic, Tanzania, and the USA. Now, what's interesting about this business is, like uh, other companies we've looked at, this particular one has moved. And uh, I want to first thank... Uh, one of our viewers, uh, David, for making this recommendation, as well as others, which we're looking into as well. So David, thank you for your recommendation. Here is your video. Um, so this company, before we go into the finances, just to give you some context, uh, they uh, floated on the stock exchange in 2002 at a value of £692 per share. However, right now, that that price has tanked to just over two pounds a share. So if it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. And if you invested back in 2002, you would be sitting on a significant loss. Um, so we're going to be looking at the finances. Now, to be really clear about mining companies, it is not really possible to um, evaluate a mining company just from its finances. It's not possible to do that for any company. But for mining companies, especially because of the nature of the business, you can't really do so. However, it is still interesting to look at those numbers as part of your investment thesis. So do look at all the other aspects of a mining company's valuation. We're just going to be looking at this one thing. So Ted, take it away. Very interested to see and share with our viewers what we found here. Excellent. So good to see you, Moeed. Um, so yes, you are absolutely right that if we're going to look at a mining company, um, looking at the, res uh, the, the financials um, is a little bit of a misnomer. I guess if you're looking at the kind of the big boys like Rio Tinto, for example, they're going to have steady income streams and they're going to use their income streams in order to fund exploration. So they've kind of got this pipeline. So for them, that kind of business as usual is a, it's, a, it's more relevant to use the financial statements. But what we're going to see in Power Metal is that they're still looking they haven't found or they haven't found anything significant and therefore um uh it, it's very difficult you know to sort of you know see what's going to happen in the future based on their accounts so let's whiz down to the profit and loss account so um here here is their accounts very easy to get hold of from their website um and lots of information about who they are and what ex explorations they have in in the pipeline where they're drilling what they're doing and who's on the board and all that kind of stuff that you guys need to be looking at um, if you are thinking of investing and you are using this as part of your fundamental investment. So here we are on the income statement. So the first thing we notice on the income statement is their revenue is basically zero nine thousand pounds uh, which basically means that they haven't found anything they they're still in the exploration world so as we said if you're a if you're a big player in this marketplace you're going to have some mines which are finished in your decommissioning you're going to have some mines which are still in production some mines which are early production some mines where you're doing the exploration or developing somewhere you're just exploring and you've kind of got a conveyor belt. And so effectively, you kind of got, you know, the cash from these is funding uh, the exploration over here. These guys are not in that position. They are a much smaller company. They are just looking for. And this is a kind of, so this is a, a, a play on a portfolio. This is kind of, you know, this is Wild West, sort of Las Vegas style part of your portfolio, not the kind of the bread and butter, uh, keep me alive kind of part of your portfolio, if that makes sense. Um, OK, so what we have here is so basically no income. Uh, we've got the operating expenses, the cost of running the business. Um, we also notice that there's this impairment. OK, the write down in a value of an asset. And you can see that there was an impairment the previous year as well, um, leading to a loss. And there's also a little bit of uh, a gain uh, through the um, a profit and loss account. So fair value gains is effectively the increase in the value of an asset. And then this says the loss 
from operating activities. Now, I think this is quite interesting, this loss from operating activities, because this number here, okay, and let me just clear the um, uh, annotations. So this number here uh, is effectively this number, the number nine added together with all of these numbers. So that's effectively what they're saying here. The only problem is it doesn't add up because you know as well as I do, Moe, that if you take nine, deduct five and add five, you don't get zero. So um, actually what they've managed to do um, is to make uh, that this number here uh, is in fact these three numbers here and excludes the 9,000 of sales. The 9,000 of sales, it's all included. In it, so it does add up down the bottom, but it's just interesting that you know, a company that produces its financial statements um, and then, you know, effectively gets the um, uh, gets the, uh, the the numbers wrong. Uh, I have to admit, doesn't really uh, uh, instill a lot of confidence in me, if that makes sense. So um, that's really the profit and loss account. There's no um, there's no interest, and there's no interest because there's no debt, and there's no debt because nobody in their right mind is going to lend money to a chap who says there's gold in them far hills, so to speak. So equity funded, very very high risk. Um, hold onto your hats. Um, let's go and look at the balance sheet. So quite interesting looking at the balance sheet. Here's the consolidated financial statement, total assets for this company. Um, I mean, only um, 2.6, 2.7 million pounds. So this is, you know, this is really, it's not a big company at all. Um, and of those assets, they've nearly got nearly a million pounds in cash. Um, and then the rest is the financial assets at fair value. So we should really be going to look at some of these numbers here and see what's going on. You'll notice the intangible assets has fallen significantly. Okay, these intangible assets, these will be the licenses for exploration. So, um, you know, they'll go to, uh, you know, somewhere in Tanzania, for example, they'll say to the government, we want to look in this area here, they'll buy a license, which gives them the right to kind of go and explore. And then they're hoping uh, to find gold, literally. So let's go and have a look at some of those numbers um, uh, uh, before we look at the bottom half of the balance sheet. Um, uh, and so we're looking at notes 10, 12 and 13. So here we are at, at note 10 um, and we're looking at the, um, uh, the intangible assets here. Uh, and you'll notice that there's, there's a, 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 the impairment um, a charge. So this is the impairment going on here that we saw coming through the profit and loss account. Um, and the impairment um, for the previous year as well. So what's actually going on? Uh, and, you know, the kind of what's going on is really detailed in the notes to the accounts. So um, without going into detail on these notes to the accounts, um, you can see these, the intangible assets are what's called PMR and C -A -A -C -B -H, and PMR, they're still holding CBH, effectively, they have written off. They've just basically taken from 970 and they've just said, no, it isn't worth that much. Um, we're gonna write it down to zero. Why have they done that? Well, here we go. PMR, they kind of talk about um, following a, a discovery. Um, they're reasonably happy with it. And so um, uh, this license in the board's view, uh, let me just annotate this. So this license in the board's view is likely to have a value greatly in excess of the sums expended and therefore the carrying value is not subject to any impairment. So what they're saying is that we're holding it at this value, but we think it's worth a lot more. Uh, however, on the other side, we've got uh, CBH uh, and CBH, uh, this is in uh, Cameroon. Um, and uh, what we see is um, the licenses are due for renewal. Um, it would be expensive. Lack, uh, given the lack of work may not be granted and decided not to conduct that. So basically they've just closed their um, operations there. Uh, and this is kind of the nature of the business. So, you know, they're in some parts, they've got a license. They say, we've bought the license. We can't increase the value of the license for obvious reasons, but we really think that, you know, there's kind of gold just underneath the, um, underneath the surface or metaphorical gold. Um, uh, and for other licenses, they're saying, look, we're just, we're, we're barking up the wrong tree here. This isn't gonna work. We're gonna let it go. You know, and, and you as an investor, you need to be comfortable taking that kind of, you know, riding through that. So um, in effect, what we see, the operating costs are a lot of write down in these licenses. And it's really difficult to kind of, you know, to, to, to work out, you know, they're not operating at a loss. It's just, you know, they're buying licenses uh, and some of those licenses aren't coming to fruition. So they're just writing them down and, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're effectively, they are worthless. 
So let's go back to the balance sheet and look at the, um, uh, the rest of the balance sheet. So um, <coughs> here we have the, um, the, the bottom half of the balance sheet. You'll notice that there's, there's um, uh, uh, not a lot in the way of, of liabilities, a um, little bit of trade and, other, uh, trade and other payables, some deferred consideration. Um, so con deferred consideration is uh, money we've received but not yet earned. Um, uh, so that'll come through in a, in a, in a future period, kind of deferred income. Um, so not a lot in terms of total liabilities. So really, as we'd expect with a company like this, it's all funded through equity um, because it's very, very high risk. Um, and we can see that they've been making losses. So really share capital and share premium. This is what the investors have put in. Um, and they have spent 21 million so far on licenses and exploration and looking for all of these precious metals. And, uh, you know, they'll go to the market and they'll say, we think we found something and everyone goes fantastic, buy, buy, buy. And then they'll go back to the market and say, actually, you know what, we didn't find anything. And everyone goes, sell, sell, sell. And then they go, oh, no, hold on a sec, we have found something. And everyone goes, buy, buy, buy again. And then they go, oh, no, we haven't. And, and it's, you know, and, and, and that's the kind of roller coaster. Uh, and that's, you know, it's good for day traders. Uh, and it's uh, OK for people who want a little bit of rocket fuel in their portfolio. Um, but it needs to be peripheral. Do not bet your house on this company is my personal opinion. Here's their cash flow. Um, so we can uh, see that they are, you know, they're burning cash, net cash flows using operating activities. Um, they're burning at about uh, six, uh, five to six um, uh, a million, uh, sorry, 100,000 a year, um, uh, which is, you know, okay, but, you know, they're gonna run out of cash. They've got about, what do we say, a million in the bank. Um, so they've got about two years worth of cash. Um, you can see that they are also investing. So this will be things like the licenses, the purchase of financial assets of fair value. So these will be licenses and also some joint ventures going on. Um, so if we add these two numbers together, you can kind of see that they're burning about a million pounds a year. They've got a million pounds um, and they're funding it through issuing more shares. So each year, each year they're going to the market, they're giving the story uh, and some shareholders are going, no, I've had enough. Uh, some shareholders are going, yep, no, I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, and they're continuing to fund these guys. So there's really the, um, the, the finances, and I don't think there's anything kind of really that exciting jumping out of us from those numbers, apart from the fact that it doesn't look like they can add up. Um, as you mentioned, uh, on the share price, um, you know, they floated uh, at a very, and, and here is the, the share price going back to kind of the year dot when they floated. So they floated with a great story. Uh, and then they suddenly find that actually it wasn't such a great story. I'd love to have known, I'd love to have been at the press conference here when they suddenly said, we have struck gold and everyone goes, well, hey. And so if you'd bought at the bottom and sold at the top, you'd be a very, very rich person. Um, but of course, if you were the person who bought at the top and then suddenly decided that you were going to get out here, you'd have been a very unhappy person. So, you know, for everybody who's kind of made a lot of money, uh, there's somebody else on the other side of the trade who has probably lost a lot of money. So, you know, uh, and, and basically, there, there's been nothing going on since about, you know, there's a little bit of spike here and nothing going on since 2018. So it'd be quite nice to zoom in on this company in a little bit more detail uh, as to one year. So here we go. Here's the one year. Um, and actually, they're up over the year, which is great. They've got a market cap of 25 um, million. Um, just to remind ourselves that the, the equity in the company is about 2 million. So it's pretty much all equity. Um, they're burning a million a year, which means that they will be back to the market with their caps in their hands, uh, asking for more money. Um, I'm reminded of the definition of a gold mine. Uh, a gold mine is defined as being a hole in the ground with a liar uh, standing at the top. OK, now I'm not saying that these guys are lying, but you kind of get the kind of the sense that, you know, it's all about the story and look at the volatility in the share price. Um, you know, we see that, you know, there's a there's a good story here and then there's more, maybe you know, there's not. Yes, there is a good story. And mm, well, what's going on? And suddenly there's a we've found something else. Or have we? No, we haven't. Yes, we have. No, we haven't. Uh, oh, you know, it's going to be good. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, you know, this is kind of, you know, very, very volatile. Uh, and, and that's kind of reflecting the nature um, of the business. So uh, if you believe, you know, I'd almost say if you're doing a fundamental research, um, this is almost the last place you look at is, is the fundamentals. It's quite interesting looking at them. And I think we, we do need to. But, um, you know, if you if you buy this company, you're buying the story. You're buying the fact that there is gold in them far hills, that these guys are going to find it uh, and that you're going to make, you know, your 10, 20 bagger, for example. And if you don't believe it, 
then don't touch it. And that's really my um, my opinion or my approach to these guys. Personally, um, I, I don't know the industry. I don't know the company that well. I don't know the story. I don't know the uh, the the management. Um, it's not it, it's not something that I'm putting my money into. Let's put it like that, Moby. Yeah, def- I mean, I, I agree. Definitely not a company where I would, it wouldn't be a core part of my portfolio, put it that way. It would be on, on the fringes. Um, so, you know, before I make the recommendation on another video I should look at, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, as David did, you know, he left a note for us. You can do so either in the comment section or email us if you have our email addresses, um, you know, and, uh, you know, make a request for a particular company you'd like us to analyze, whether you're thinking about doing business with them or whether you're thinking about investing with them, we will be happy to help you. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Your voice will be heard. Now, what I recommend is looking at another mining company that we analyzed so that you can draw some some trends, some comparisons, uh, and that was Codal Minerals. So we'll leave a link up there for you uh, to be able to look at. Ted, thank you. And uh, until the next video, everyone, have a great day uh, and uh, leave a comment in, in the comment section. We'd love to hear your thoughts, particularly from those who are uh, experts in the industry. So what are your thoughts? Is there some context that you can add? So until that next video, thank you again, Ted. Thank you, everyone. Good to speak to you, Mary.